with cursor doubling down on not being free and not open source, the only way to go right now is open source. And the best alternative for now is Ader. Ader is AI pair programming in our terminal. It's the best open source project as a coding assistant right now. So for today's video, we're gonna combine Ader with the Quen 2.5 coder and see if it can work locally as an efficient code assistant. You can skip this step if you already have Olama on your machine, but you need to download Olama on your operating system that you have. In my case, it's Windows, so I'm gonna download it for Windows. After installing Olama, you need to go and search for the Quinn 2.5 coder, which is a very good model. Here, as you can see, there is the 7B and the 1.5B model. We are going for the 7B model. You need to copy this command line over here and paste it in any terminal that you have. The Quinn 2.5 coder is the latest series of the code specific Quinn large language model, which improved in code generation and code reasoning and code fixing. I made a video about it. You can watch it over here on my channel when we go on fully testing this model as a code assistant. Now, at any MVD folder that you have, open your Visual Studio code or any editor that you like. I have created this environment called Ader and inside it, I want to activate inside the script, the activate file. So I'm gonna try to activate it from here. I had to switch to the SMD terminal because the PowerShell for some reason didn't work. Now, after activating the environment, if you activate it, you will see the name of the environment before the command line itself. And here we're gonna paste python-m pipe install to I either chat and let it install everything that either need. Okay, right now we can activate either by typing either command in the terminal. Let's try it out. Either. Right, right now we have been activating either. The first thing that you will see, no get repo found, create to track either changes. You need to press yes because either use git to track the progress or the change inside our code and it can go back if something went wrong. Here it's give us a warning that it doesn't see any uh, models or variables environment that we're going to set right now so it can work. We can press yes. So the first step, let's figure out the name of the model that you installed. Here, all you have to run is Ulama list and it will give you the list of the model that you have on your machine. In my case, I've had have the Quint code latest, which is the old version, and the Quint 2.5 code the latest. This is the name of the model that you need to have. Copy it and go back to the Ader folder that we created and create a file called .env. Inside .env, we'll have few things that we need to put where the Ulama API base work. Usually, it's a local host port 11434. And there, if you open it, actually, you will find Ulama running. As you can see here, Ulama is running. That means that Ulama is working. The model, is, all you have to do is put either model equal Ulama and the name of the model. Now, after we set up the file for the environment variable that we need, go back and run either once more. It will give you this warning sign, warning for Olama, the Quinn 2.5 coder, latest unknown context window, size, and cost. It doesn't cost us anything because it's on local machine. Context Windows is 128K as a context length, so it's a very decent model for a small size. Let's test it out and see if it will work or not. I created a simple prompt and I sent it to ChatGPT to improve this prompt, and it gave me this very lengthy, detailed prompt about creating one page that have all the solar system planets in 3D and dynamic with a clean and modern layout and smooth effects and animation. And I sent it to Ader and it returned this code for us over here, like the HTML. CSS, the file for JavaScript. And here it gave me this explanation, which is what I like about it. So after struggling with the terminal itself, I managed to put the code inside the file. Right now it got me this ugly results, but it's working. If I hover on any one of these plots, it will give us the name of this planet, but it's not moving or there is any animation or anything. 
So I added the styles.css and I asked it to improve the style and add animation for the planets to circle around the sun, but the result that I got it doesn't do that. Give the sun outer glow and the planet's still the same. So I'm going to move from this simple example because it seemed that Win 2.5 is not showing its best of itself in this example. So here I displayed the ability to ask either itself and see if it can handle this or not and after you activate ask mode you give it the question i want to create an abi in bison using fast abi to return a json response it's a very vague prompt but it walked me through what i need to do i need to install fast abi and move your icon create new and then from fast abi import fast abi and create this kind of main bison page and after that to run the fast API application, you can use UV Corn and run the following command. But notice here that it's tried to create the specific file main .by for me before I install anything and it failed. Okay, but the funny thing that it corrected itself, I apologize for oversight. Let's create a new file called main by and include the fast API code inside it. So there is, should be a file called here. Yeah, it's mean by. Okay, it's have the code. It, it told me it you should create. This is great for me. All I have to do right now is install the library that it asked for. Okay, it's even by soon. The Quinn coder is much better because I did exactly what it told me. I need to install the fast ABI and UV icon. And I ran, the, I ran the command it gave me unit and give it the name of the app and with the flag reload. And right now, the server is working on the 8000 board. As you can see, it the message, hello world. So let's try to make this ABI as a CRUD using SQLite. So after a while, I actually managed to get a code from either that actually worked very good. Right now, I have this one file, main.by, which is the Bison code inside it, all of it. Somehow, either went to a process of fixing every single mistake it made inside the code and trying to think and reflect on what it do and it created this kind of operation of a crowd. So I started to test the ABIs. The first one that I have is over here, which is a boss method. I send it this title, boss title test. Let's say like it's number five and the content also have number five. It's send, it's returned this kind of response, which is meaning the content and the boss have been created. If I went to the local host, 8000 posts get and hit enter, I can see there is a list of posts that's coming back. So both the creation and get all are working. If I think if I edit two over here, it will return one post, which is the detail of the post number two. This is the post number two or ID two before updating. And this is after I did update it using the ABI. So I'm gonna right now try to delete it. I think all I have to do is just to change the bot to delete and hit send. And let's see if it's will return. Yeah, bot is not found. The crud completely working. So it seems that it can work nicely with Bison, but when it comes to the HTML Planet 3D thing that I wanted to create, it's not very good. As I expected, Queen Coder is very good at Bison and is better in Bison. But if I'm going to go full stack JavaScript or web development, I think the best model for that is the Cloud Sonnet 3.5. So either made about 15% of the commits, inserting 4,800 lines of code and deleting 1,500 lines of code. This is a very good. So we're going to end the video by talking about the architect mode and the editor mode just brand new from either and it's if it's correct about what it say it will be a huge improvement uh, for either especially as a coding assistant the very step that the architect mode do it send your request to the main active model which maybe will be sonnet or o1 or gbt4 then either will send this kind of response that we got from the first model to the second model aka the editor model and based on it, we return the code that we'll need to put inside our file. The problem with the architect, even it produces better results than the normal code model, but it used two different large language models. It means more tokens, it's slower and more expensive. 
Arctic model is especially useful with the OpenAI O1 model, which is strong at reasoning, but less capable at editing files. So the relation is like someone who's not good at, at thinking, which is the second model, is talking to someone who have the capability of thinking, which is the first main model. And here is an example, it's shown by either itself. As you can see here, it asks it, what is this repo? This is, is a source code to the bubbler Django package. Help, how do I use Olama? As you can see here, it gives you a response. Here in this code, the code mode, it add a function to calculate the factorial of number and it, it do it for us. And here, this is the architect mode. Can we make this simpler? And here, it give it the code, of course, and it tell it, yes, you could replace the factorial function with call to the math.factorial. And I'm pretty sure in the background, either send this to the editor model and it will return this kind of code. As you can see, there is a limit for the Queen Coder as a code assistant offline, but it seems it's doing all right. It's not that great compared to large language model like the Sonnet and the GBT4 or the GBT01. But as a completion or for simple task, it's holding its own. It also gives you the formula for how to work with any Olama model on your local machine. That's it for this video. If you found this video respecting your time and providing valuable information, please hit the like and subscription button. It helped my channel a lot. And comment down below if you're gonna if you're gonna use Coencoder in your local machine or you're gonna stick with Sonnet and GVT4. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.